see this this next story. I don't know if I should shake my head or laugh with glee. I know. So, the hacking team. <laughs> uh, there's a notorious hacking team based in Italy uh, that was hacked. Uh, the hacking team was hacked, and I mean major hacked, to the tune of 400 gig of private data from their servers was dumped in a torrent and made available publicly. And the next story is an amazing tidbit that was found in there that we'll cover. But first, let's talk about these guys a bit. Uh, they had their Twitter account taken over. Uh, they still apparently don't have control of their email uh, uh, servers. Um, they didn't take it very well. For hackers, you'd think they'd have a little bit more of a sporting attitude. Um, they threatened people. They've accused them. They've denied clear facts. Um, you know, they've, again, as I said, they, they've not been very sporting about, um, uh, about their own attack. But one thing that happened was that, that came from this was that there, I mean, it's been a treasure trove of, of information about their clientele. And for example, one of the things that we learned is that the U S FBI has spent, uh, <sighs> I just hard to even imagine this. Um, nearly a quarter of a million, wait, a quarter of a million dollars, seven hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars since 2011, buying hacking penetration spyware from these guys. Because what they 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 are an, a global marketer and seller of of spyware. They've got something called, uh, it's sometimes known as RCS. They're what they call their remote control service, also now known as Galileo. And I've seen, I've also seen one of their tools referred to as Da Vinci, which is their premier spying product. And it's a, it's a, we, we've talked about remote access Trojans. It, it's a, it's a standard rat in that it is able to siphon off data and intercept communications of that local machine where it's installed prior to its encryption. So they deal with the encryption problem by getting in and tapping before it's encrypted. It can re record Skype calls, emails, instant messages, uh, log keystrokes typed into web browsers, obviously before they're encrypted. Uh, can, of course, switch on the victim's webcam and microphone and spy on them that way. And what's really interesting is that the this this Italian hacking team maintains an office in the U.S. Uh, and there is a government contractor known as CICOM or CICOM C I C O M U S A that that logs from our intelligence agencies, the FBI and the DEA, show have purchased surveillance technology from a government contractor n uh, under this name of SICOM, and their, their address and phone number is identical to the hacking team's U.S. office address and phone number. So this is just a very thinly veiled cover for... for uh, a, you know, a government contractor that's actually the hacking team selling technology globally. And one of the things that, that, that was revealed was that they are saying no to nobody. They're selling this stuff to very repressive regimes in the world that are like, you know, that are formally banned from, from receiving this technology uh, from a, a supposed, you know, uh, uh, forthright uh, Italian, uh, you know, uh, hacking company. You know, Steve, the thing that really worries me about this is the hacking team, they want to portray themselves as they're a security firm, just like any other Legit security firm. Legitimate. A legitimate yes. security firm. And 
there are companies in the United States that the FBI has spent far more money with. I'm thinking of like a Gigamon. Gigamon sells these very high quality, very high capacity taps that I think the lowest you can buy a box for is like 200 grand. And, and right. that they buy a lot of those. Or Juniper, yep. Cisco, HP, they all sell security appliances, we know security they're tools. Big, we know they're big on tapping. Exactly. But what kills me about this, about Hacking Team, is this is not a tool that you could misuse. It's black hat all the way. There is no yep. legitimate use of a rat. There is no legitimate right. use of a zero day except to do something that you're not supposed to do, especially if you're a government. Yep. Oh. Yep. So what was what was really interesting, and this just happened, uh, is that among what was found in this 400 gig download was evidence of and all the details on a heretofore unknown flash zero day vulnerability. These guys had it. These guys knew about it. We don't know who they have sold it to, but it immediately became public knowledge when this 400 gig of data was th th that was exfiltrated from them due to them being hacked. Oh, and by the way, uh, also in there are some password files, their own, the, their own hackers' passwords, which are extremely unimpressive. Um, I've, I've taken a look at them and they're, you know, they're literally, they're like variations on the word password, believe it or not. I mean, it's just like, whoa. <laughs> One, two, okay. three, four. Okay. Uh, um, you know, like, you know, numeric zero in, in you know, in P-A-S-S, -S, you know, W-0-R-D. It's like, whoa, really, guys? Um, anyway, uh, CERT now has the vulnerability. Uh it is a, you know, of course, we we dove into rather deeply last week's emergency out of cycle patch for Flash that Adobe released. Well, they may be doing another one soon because the the cert posting links to a tweet which contains the file. I downloaded it and checked it out. If you click that RAR file, you get a an archive with a very nice readme that explains the entire exploit and control contains the action script three code to pull this off and if you do it with, with a sample web page it launches calc.exe on your windows machine in chrome so chrome is not patched against this it's a zero day and they've had it and it wasn't public. We don't know who they sold it to. Maybe they were using it themselves. But we also know that they do make these of things available to various agencies who want, who purchase zero-day exploits in order to install their own software on other people's machines. So this is just so amazing that, you know, in this windfall of data, we found a zero-day that, I mean, an exploit with complete how to use it code that who knows how many tens of thousands of dollars they were getting to everyone they sold this to. Steve, and, it, and everyone's vulnerable to it right now. Were you at uh, Black Hat last year? No. Uh, they had a speaker by the name of uh, Daniel Gear, And uh, one of the things that he said he'd love to see the U.S. government implement is this idea of it as an entity, because it's the only one that has the resources to, to do it, buying up zero day and then immediately making them available to security researchers in the United States. Um, and it sounds like they're doing half of that. They're buying up zero days. They're just not making it available to security researchers in the United well, States. And, and we've also known, I don't remember now what the source of knowledge is, um, but for example, Microsoft provides the U.S. government with advanced knowledge of problems with Windows before they tell the rest of the world. And all we've always been wondering, uh, okay, uh, why? You know, why, why do they get that? And, and before the public does, you know, it would be handy. It'd be very handy. <laughs> and, and, you know, not just handy, but this is kind of table stakes now. Uh, I mean, you can't, I'm sure there are people who look at a tool like this and they say, 
oh, this is a great way for us to gather intelligence. But at the same time, I mean, if if you are working in the U.S. government, you also have to understand that this is something being used against the very corporations and the individuals who make up our constituency and the people we're trying to protect. Right. It, it doesn't make sense to sit on something like this. Uh, you know, a zero day for a plug-in that's on every browser being run, well, almost every browser that's being run in the United States, that sounds like something that you would probably want to get patched immediately. Well, yes, and it also, it also means that um, you, while you have that and nobody else does, you can sell that for some serious money yep. to no doubt all the clients that you've got on the global stage that want to be able to, to penetrate other people's machines. The funny part about this story is hacking team, they say that this isn't going to do them in. They're not going to shrivel up. They're not going to go away. But their source code's on the Internet. So unless yeah. they create something entirely new, their exploits won't work anymore. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, assuming everyone patches their machines, which we probably well, it's won't. It's certainly the case that no one's going to pay for it because right. <laughs> because now now they've got <laughs> source for for what they were trying to sell before. I wonder if you so, could, if you're an oppressive right. government, can you get a refund if you just bought a package like a week ago? I mean, it, it seems I like you should it. be able to stop payment on that. I yeah, I would bet refunds are uh, probably a non-starter. 